Hey guys, this is Charmaine Ironside with Ironside Fitness and it is Thursday. I normally only do the videos on Monday, but I'm feeling super inspired. I was just cleaning up some work emails and I got a fun email from Carolyn, a photographer who did some photos with me yesterday and she sent me some sneak peeks. And so about eight months ago, uh, early August of this year, or I guess of last year, uh, one month after my daughter Kennedy was born, I went for a photo shoot. And I wanted to document basically what my body looked like a month after giving birth to Kennedy. Um, and as some of you guys know, I mean my weight really crept up throughout my pregnancy and I don't have any regrets about that because I had a lot of fun and I enjoyed a lot of amazing foods. However, I definitely learned uh, a lesson about eating without too much control and um, I had about you know 40 excess pounds to drop after the water weight and the baby came out so I, I got up to about 198 in the end uh, the day I gave birth and after Kennedy was born and I dropped down to about 180 by within a month so that's all right and I just didn't feel good in my body so I mean I decided I wanted to do the photo shoot to document it and I knew that I had to come down to a comfortable weight in a slow and steady fashion. I've done some crash crazy diets in the past. Um, sadly, I've been sort of a chronic dieter since I was 12 years old. I got some body image issues implanted in me and I um, had a lot of self-belief issues. And so I started dieting about 12 years old, yo-yo diets, uh, never feeling like I was good enough and always trying to prove something to somebody but never really figuring out what my real internal motivation was. So August 2015, I was 180 pounds, I was feeling pretty drab, and I'll just show you a quick photo of me, I'm in my office, but I just wanted to show you, that's me, feeling kind of meh. Uh, 180 and you know running and operating and owning a fitness studio there's some pressure to look a certain way and I sure didn't feel like I was you know being a beacon of light and being the example for my clients of living a healthy lifestyle I was eating cake every night and I was really tired and I was really stressed and I was learning how to be a new mom and so I knew something had to change and over the last eight months I've had a really really cool journey um, and a lot of it has traced back to emotional eating. So I just wanted to share how in eight months I went from 180 pounds to now sitting comfortably, and that's what the biggest word is comfortably, at 145 pounds. And I feel great and I feel like it's a number that I can be so comfortable with. And you know, my weight might fluctuate a few pounds either side of that right now, but that's okay. And this hasn't been a strenuous starvation journey. It's just been a slow, steady, loving, exciting journey towards being my best self. And I can say at age 31, nine months post birth, I feel stronger and better than I've ever felt in my whole life. So I wanted to share with you five things that I've done over the last five months that have been the keys to my success in, you know, dropping, I guess I could say since the day she was born, I went from 197 and today I weigh 145 pounds. Of course, there's some baby weight, you know, she weighed seven pounds, 10 ounces, and of course there's some water weight, but I'm really proud of that number and more I'm proud of just the hard work and dedication and the things that I've done to get there because I know that by doing it in a way that was sustainable, I'm going to be able to maintain it and feel really good about it. So I didn't want to forget what my points were, but my first point was that I started to value self-care and self-love. Maybe that sounds a bit woo-woo, but I really had to realize that if I didn't take care of myself, I was not going to be a good mom, I was not going to be a good wife, I was not going to be a good uh fitness coach or anything in life. So I decided to start being selfish and start taking care of myself, getting massages, getting pedicures more often than I used to and, you know, going for walks when I needed, asking for help when I needed. You know, we even hired a part-time nanny and that's just been a game changer for us. But before, you know, when she was first born, I felt so guilty that I couldn't be a full-time mom and I had all these issues around that. So as soon as I realized that if I was a great 
if I felt great about myself and I was developing and I was being the best me I can be, I could also be the best mom and the best business owner and the best wife, etc. So that was the biggie. That was a huge game changer, just realizing that I had to take care of myself before I could really help others. Secondly, being more aware and mostly surrounding eating. So for much of my life, I've really, you know, I've lived to eat instead of eating to live. So I'm, I was, I can say I was literally obsessed and addicted to food. Um, I never would say I had a strict, a real eating disorder. Um, I just loved to eat. Uh, it was my way of soothing myself. When my mom died uh, a couple of years ago, I ate myself to sleep every night. I, instead of crying myself to sleep and get letting my emotions out, I just ate myself to sleep. Um, you know, when I'm stressed, I eat. When I'm tired, I eat. When I'm excited and I'm celebrating, I eat. So I guess I should say that in the past tense because in the last eight months, I've decided to be aware of it. So if I'm eating because I'm sad, at least I know I'm eating because I'm sad, and that's the first step for me to change. So if you have an emotional eating issue, just being aware is the first step. You know, I'm standing at the fridge, milling around in there. I think to myself, am I hungry or am I just exhausted? And maybe if I'm exhausted, I could just go to bed instead of eating. So that's kind of the first step is being aware. Um, and just emotional eating is huge. It's always been a big one for me. So just starting to make small shifts around food and whether I'm eating because I'm nourishing my body or if I'm nourishing and trying to satisfy an appetite or an emotion. So that's number two and that's been huge for me. Bigger than any nutritional shift I could ever make is just getting the emotional side under control and then everything else has just fallen into place. I eat when I'm hungry and I stop when I'm full. I eat mindfully. And because I love my body and respect my body, I eat clean most of the time and I still have little cheats here and there and joy meals because that's what life's all about is balance and moderation. So the next one is goal setting. But everyone hears about goal setting and yeah, 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 we should all have goals. I'm passionate, absolutely passionate about goal setting. However, I really had to shift myself from setting goals from a place of self-hate to a place of self-love. So I saw a really neat quote recently, and it says that um, a negative motivation is incompatible with a positive long-term result. So that really hit me hard because I've realized that I've been dieting and I've been doing different things over the years out of a place of hating my thighs and hating my butt and not feeling like I was good enough, not feeling I looked the part of a fitness trainer. And so that always led to maybe some good results in the short term because I was really strict and I'm a driven person and I can stick to a plan. However, in the end, because that goal was from a place of negativity and self-hate, it never lasted. As soon as I was done, I reached a point, I would just give up and go back to my old ways. So since I've discovered that setting goals from a place of self-love and acceptance is so much more powerful, I've been able to set goals and maintain them. So, you know, I look at myself in the mirror. I appreciate my body for what it can do for me, the way I can move, the way I was able to give birth naturally, all of these amazing features about my body. I love my arms. I love my core. I love my face. I always try to find things I love. And then, yes, I have, you know, I'm not that as proud about my legs and my butt and those kind of things, but who cares? I'm going to work at those. I'm not going to complain. I'm going to just say, you know what? My legs are strong and I want them to be stronger and I want to have toned legs and I'm excited to wear shorts uh, on the beach. And you know what? That's just a thing about self-improvement for me. So it's not like I'm like, oh my God, I hate my legs. I'm so embarrassed. No, I'm fine with my body. I appreciate and love my body. And yes, I still always want to work to be better, but not from a place of self-hate. So I found that was a huge game changer as well, was figuring out a positive motivation towards my goals instead of a negative, hurtful, hateful towards my body motivation. So next one is, like I was mentioning, the food. Emotional eating is the big one for me and for many people. However, when it comes to food, you also have to watch what you're eating. So it's great if you get your emotions in check and you only eat when you're hungry, but also eating clean. So I love the 80-20 rule. 
eat clean 80% of the time and 20% have those joy meals, have those little indulgences that maybe are a little bit calorie dense and not the best choices perhaps. Um, and you'll still be able to see results and have the body and have a great body and have a healthy body. Um, I've actually shifted more to a 90-10 because I really want to have I want to be in my peak physical shape. At 31 years old, I want to be in the best shape of my whole life. So 80-20, I've been doing that for a while. It's not quite cutting it to get to the real dream body and the feeling I want to have and be able to do the amount of pull-ups I want to be able to do and things like that. So I'm, I've shifted to a 90-10. So eating clean 90% of the time and then 10% of the time eating whatever the heck I want, totally mindfully, guilt-free, and enjoying every bite. So that's a really good tip is just really, you know, clean up your nutrition to an 80-20 or a 90-10 or whatever variation approximately works for you um, and realizing that if you eat and feel guilty and bad about it, your insulin response is increased. You're going to gain more weight from eating something under stress than you would eating the same food under a state of relaxation. So that's a great motivator. And what I want to leave you with is exercise. Of course, to get to my dream body, I had to exercise. I really believe in exercising. You know, for me, it's three to four times a week. Really, 45 minutes is all I need and all most people need, uh, as long as you're doing really effective workouts. And I take a lot of pride in the workouts at Ironside. You know, over five years, I've never repeated the same workout twice for our clients, and I love going and working out. You know, if I can't make it to the studio because of scheduling, you know, maybe I, I'm at home because Patrick's out, Kennedy needs to be cared for, obviously. We'll go for a run in the chariot and I'll do lunges and squats and push-ups and exercises with her. So I don't ever make excuses that I don't have time or I can't do it because I don't have childcare. I always find a way to get my fitness in. And we're an active family, but we always take at least one or two days off a week and just totally lounge and enjoy just being. So I want to share with you my photos. I'm so proud of them. This is eight months in the work, in the making, and I'll just turn it to, I'll just let you see my computer screen. So going from about 197 pounds before birth, 198, and then the photo is of me in August at one about 180, and then dropping down to 145, which is just a really comfortable, happy weight for me. And I'm just really, I'm not showing you this to impress you at all. I just want to impress upon you that anything is possible if you work at it. And it doesn't have to be crazy and these crash diets and these crazy pills and these body wraps. It just has to be from a place of self-love and a little bit of discipline and a little bit of commitment and a little bit of consistency and you can do anything you want in life. So I hope that inspires you. I'd love to hear any comments you have and I hope you have such an amazing day. See you!